spiritual, <coughs> and the other part is carnal. Because <coughs> somebody said, well, let's have to make a happy uh, uh, come together here and let's compromise. So I looked all through the book because people were saying stuff like that. You have to do this, you have to do that. I hadn't found anything to promote the part of the carnality. Always everything with it, like uh, in Romans 8, it says about the carnal mind it has enmity against God. It's, you know, it can't understand, it's understand why God would have you do that. It really wouldn't. It works to the carnal side. And so the carnal mind is controlled by the flesh. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, everybody just say, it, 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 my carnal mind will get me in trouble. <laughs> With the God that we serve, that's ready to do anything, ready to do something right now, and the carnal mind will always put the question in there. Whenever you pray, you earnestly pray, <coughs> and it doesn't happen right away, the first thing that happens is I get a drink of water. And the first thing the carnal mind does, it questions God. It does it in a sly way. And then pretty soon you start forgetting about your prayer. You start forgetting <coughs> you don't want to voice it because if you voice it, then all of a sudden uh, you start voicing negative stuff and it starts growing around you. <laughs> so if you don't want it to bother you, then what you want to do is get the carnal mind under control and know carnal mind... I already gave you up once, but I'm going to give you up once and for all. That doesn't make you into a dummy. That just makes you somebody who said, I don't want the world to control me anymore. I don't want the things of the world. I don't want the things that uh, make me feel best. I want the thing that makes me feel real and alive. And the Bible said, but the spiritual mind, you have uh, peace and you're just uh, a person that can uh, praise God and not have a second thought on it. So I'm in eight, Romans 8, and um, I'm just going to read a little bit here. I'm going to do seven. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject <coughs> to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Everybody say, whoa, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't everybody. But ye, that, uh, but ye are not in the flesh. You're not in the flesh. And if I didn't lose my place. But uh, ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ... He is none of his. Here's the thing. God is for you and not against you. When we're not spiritual, we're not really in tune with God. God's always in tune with us, but we're not in tune with him. When the mind starts being spiritual, <coughs> and it said it right there, you're not carnal. You are spiritual. Somebody that's spiritual can move a mountain with request, not with begging. If we believe that we're talking to God and God's back talking with us, where God talks to us as well as us talk to God, sometimes we get carried away 
And because God answers prayer, we think that we control God when we pray, but the controller is the enemy. It's the stuff that the mind lives off of, of the world. So controlled by the world, we would become a, a people that would do what we want to do or compromise. Uh, I'll go to church on Sunday morning, but I won't go to church on Sunday night. I'll go to church on uh, when, when I don't feel like going to someplace else and visiting. God intended for you to stay with your flock. God intended for you to live with your flock. And they would be your people, and uh, this is God's, uh, that would be God's people that are a family and now a unit. And a spiritual person will always be able to talk to God because he knows that he is. Not because God answered me or told me so big a uh, thing to say, the prophetic word. Well, I want you to know that God is spiritual. And when you speak with him and you stay spiritual, things start turning the good for the good. Because God didn't make somebody that was um, a carnal-minded person is always in trouble. One way or another. Drama everywhere. But I believe that God is here for a reason. I have us here for a reason. Uh, several times I could have been dead. But I want you to know something. I'm alive today because of Jesus Christ. And my testimony is this. That God has always watched out for me. And God's always made it so that I know that God is for me and not against me. God gives me thoughts. And when God gives me thoughts, when I'm just maybe uh, praying or just sitting around, all of a sudden God will give me a thought and it'll move me. It'll make something happen inside of me. It will tell me everything's okay. It will tell me that God's for me and not against me. Yes. And when, those, when the Bible starts speaking back to you, that's the voice you want to hear. When the Bible comes to you, that's what you want to wait for. When we get away from it, it seems like we've got a distance between us and God, and we're really not. Because he said that uh, he's going to be with us all the time, every day. He's not leaving you nor forsake you. He's going to be there all the way to the end. So God's never left you. Jesus is walking with you right now, making sure that the enemy can't win. But you need to get that on your mind and your heart and keep it fresh every day. Because the farther away from God that we get, the further uh, our mind goes back to the world. And we see we have been missing church. We... You know, maybe if they ask me to do, uh, you know, a little extra work, stay a few extra hours, pretty soon you start walking yourself away and you blame it on your workplace and every place else. If you'd put the priority back on your spiritual life, put it right back on the church, you would be here because God will always direct you to his house. Somebody said, well, my house is, I'm the house. Well, your house, if it's connected to God right, will lead you to his house. Amen. Talking about, he said, uh, don't forget to, don't forsake, uh, coming together and in the house of God where we can put our petitions up to God, where we can get the praise with each other and we get strength from each other. We become a unit that God has made powerful. Yeah, yeah. So now when we, when we agree, when we start praying, and we start uh, praising God, there's a, an automatic kicks in spiritual gear to where that God is now moving in our place. And we're looking for a move of God all the time. And yet we push it away every time it comes. If you would lift up your hands and freely praise God and not have to be told so much, 
but sometimes you have to be. But if you realize what is controlling your life, if your carnal mind is, other things are more important than staying for church. Other things are more important because they don't know why. God, uh, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. God knows he made the day. You know what I mean? He's, you're not running out of time because of God. You have time because of God. You are spiritual minded. When you get spiritual minded, then you start moving in the dimension of the spirit. And so now you believe that miracles do happen because you are saying them, asking them, and you're seeing them. If you're not, there's a flaw. And it's not in God. It's not in the spiritual realm. It's in the carnal mind. It's in the carnal realm. And this carnal realm will always lead you away from what God has intended for you to have. God wants you to do more for him. Because after all, your carnal mind, when you got saved, it died. Carnal mind, here's what it says in Romans 8, uh, is it that inside you is sin. So when the carnal mind gets uh, controlling, he leads you back to things of sin, things that will uh, keep you away from God. Then the spiritual mind, when it's alive, and it's always alive, he has what God wants intended for you to have. He wants your family. Well, I'll tell you, good luck at that, God. It's not the way you act. You just go ahead and say, God, I'm taking a stand, too, for my family. And uh, God, he's not going to go, well, not them. <laughs> God's not going to stick his nose up or say they stink. God's going to say the same thing he said about you. Go get him, guys. Go get him. Keep on pl uh, claiming God, them for God. Just keep on doing what you need to do to let them see how you live a godly life and a righteous life. And you're not the same person that you were. If you're the same person who you were to your family, then you have not changed a bit. You're still carnal-minded. And when you get around familiar people who you used to hang around with, you get carnal-minded. So the carnal mind, the mind is going to be always like that because it's learned to go by the ways of the um, somebody said the old ways. No, it's not the old ways. It's the same ways. Same ways that makes God be far from you in your mind. For God to be close to you in your mind, you need to be able to love him. You have to go love him past your friends, past your workplace. You have to love him. You have to love him and know. I'm not acting like, um, you know, we got to change our whole world right now or we're going to die and go to hell. No, but we need to get as far as away from the world so that we might see what God wants us to do and wants us to be in front of these other people in this day that we live. And every day that we give, it's another new day. It's not an old day. It's a new day. So the way you're doing now is following the old world you call it, or the old way, but God wants you to start walking for him. He wants you to have some spiritual victories, and when you have them, testify about them. How many understand that? Praising God is not anything that will make you look like a sissy, but a, a guy that a man or woman wants to put their hands up, praise God. They don't need to wait for somebody else to lead them. They need to do it themselves. Lift up your hands right now and just praise God. <laughs> if it's just because I told you, then that you did it wrong. If you're going to do it the way it, it is to God, praise him because you love him and you know he's for you and not against you. There is another place. We're going to make it to heaven. And when we get there, we need to know that we're um, able to do whatever they're there. So this is called practice down here, but we're really going to get into it when we get up there.
There's Thank a, you, there's a uh, right, right now, while I'm preaching, I'm feeling it right now, uh, uh, like a, a little miracle going through me right now. And right now, I, I believe that God intended for it to be yours as well. And so what I would like for you to do, when you start feeling something, then start praising God. When you start feeling something, see, God wants to bless you. That's why you came to church this morning, to be in the house of God, under the move of God, letting the Spirit of God have its way. The reason why it says it that way is because we need to let the Spirit of God always have a way. Uh, but we're practicing sometimes and we fall off in the uh, pains of the world or whatever else is out there. Something sad happened, something bad happened. And so you're concentrating half on that and half on God. Right now, the peace and the joy and the healing comes right from the Spirit of a living God and he's not waiting for anything else but you. God wants to do it this morning for you. You know, almost like as if, we, if the whole church was full and lifting up their hands and praising God, then we kind of get, get lost in that or just kind of put our hands up and, and let it go by. But I want you to know that there's just a few of us today, um, and until we start working our spiritual world, our spiritual walk with God, well, it'll probably be empty seats. But I'd rather see a few real good, strong people who are ready to receive a miracle at any time. If they don't need a miracle, somebody by them or around them does. If nothing else, this world today is losing a lot of people to an act of the world. And so you and I are here. Look at somebody and say, and see if they're here. Just say hello and see if they speak back. That's all right. Sometimes we have to make that happen, I guess. But what we want to do is we want to please God. We want to be spiritual. We want to please God. We don't want to let that world stop our move of God in our life because of the questions, because of anything the enemy can send at you, I want you to know God is bigger than all that. God is bigger than everything you cry about. God's ready to give you the joy of the Lord. <laughs> He's ready to do it now. It's hard for the preacher to stop, uh, and I want to make it happen. I want to somehow pull somebody by the ear and say, you listening to God? <laughs> or are you listening to you? If you're listening to you, at least you can't blame it on anybody else. God is moving because he is the mountain mover. Yeah, yeah. God is absolutely the one that will rather than will not. God's always looking out for you and the better of you. But he needs for you to ask. He said, I already know what you need. But if you don't ask, I'm not delivering. He didn't say it that way. I paraphrased it. But if you're not part of this, then you're not spiritual. If you're not moving in God uh, because somebody might think you're crazy, talking to God, talking to somebody that's not there, he is here. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you all the way to the end. And I'll be that because I am God. I don't need another reason. God's so tough that the enemy trembles, the Bible says. Once he hears, hears the name of Jesus, he starts to tremble. All right, I'll give you one more hint. For you, for your sake... The devil knows he's already been totally defeated by Jesus Christ. He knows that the devil trembles. I mean, the devil knows he trembles. And, but we don't realize when we come around with the name of Jesus branded on us, that's the seal of God, the Holy Ghost, and we're been, we've been chosen. 
if we don't do anything spiritual while we're around certain people or different things like that, that's opening a door and letting the enemy think that you are weak. You are somebody that can't hold it spiritually. But if you're somebody that can, I want you to know you'll have less and less doors open. People won't get to you as much. People won't bother you as much otherwise. Your temper, so-called, will control you. Or your thoughts will control you. Everything controls you ex out on the outside except for God. So the more doors you leave open, the less spiritual you're going to be. You close those things up and realize what God just said here. You're dead. You know, you gave your heart and life to me. You no longer own it. He bought it with his blood, and now we belong to Jesus Christ. We belong to God Almighty. We are now been grafted in. We're part of the kingdom of God. So what we need to do right now is just to let our spirit loose. How many felt like shouting any during any of the word? <laughs> then just do it. This is a Pentecost church. This is one that believes in the move of God. The pastors believe in the move of God. The deacons believe in the move of God. And so coming together, we should be a powerful source that the devil can't get in here. When we moved the mountain, it wasn't us. It was the Spirit of God that's inside of you, the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. He dwells in us. The same Spirit that raised Lazarus, it's in us. And so as we got that, I want you to know something. It wasn't just something that you can write down another set of initials by your name, D.D., whatever. Uh, what I want right now is everybody just kind of stand to your feet, and I want you to feel freedom. Just Come on. You can do what you want. You can stick your tongue out, or you can uh, close your eyes and go to sleep, or whatever you want while you're standing, or you can lift up your hands Come on. because you're getting ready for a miracle. Getting rid of me is the hardest thing. My carnal mind wants to stay alert and wants to be there in case there's any trouble. Well, that's not the way to praise God. You're not God. Put your hands up a little bit higher. Make it so that you know they're up there and everybody knows they're up there. And just start praising God. And then maybe just do a little thing like, hmm. I think, yes, I shout a little Thank bit. You, and Thank you, give him praise. Hallelujah. God's wanting to move right now. Thank you, Lord. And those things that you thought were mountains, they're just mohills to him, just little anthills. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those things that you think can hold you back, they can't hold you back. They can't hold you back. Only you can hold you back. The devil don't come in and hold you back. I want you to know something unless you open the door. So shut the door. Get rid of every misery that might be there. Just get away from the enemy right now and give him the praise that you want. Now, if you're giving God the praise you want rather than, I mean, the, rather than what the Spirit wants, the Spirit wants you to praise God with a, all your breath with your hands in the air. Hallelujah. And sometimes it says clap your hands. There's some kind of excitement that takes it away from us, our carnal ways, our carnal minds, and we bring it into the spiritual realm where God can reach us because we are already with him and he's just waiting for you to get the wrong thought out of your way. Get the things away from you that will make you not be who God called you to be. God called you to be somebody who is powerful. 
He didn't give us a spirit of fear. He took that away from us. He made us have that sure mind. He, ma he gave us the victory so that we could pray in his name. And everything we said in the name of Jesus, Jesus said, I'll get it from your father. We become brothers to Jesus Christ, heirs and joint heirs. And when we become that joint heir, I want you to know something. We didn't get it when we got to heaven. We're, how many still here? All right, that's a good sign that we're here. This good sign is for this, for I know that if I agree with you on any one thing, Sister Greta, if I agree with you on any one thing, it's supposed to happen. It's not, we'll see. It's not questionable. It's supposed to happen. So the only place I can close that door is in me. Or if we're agreeing, one of us or both of us are not agreeing. Come on now. We're agreeing that it might. No, there's none of that. We're all right for it right now. Yeah. And so I do agree right now Amen. on your body. Yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, oh, I wish I could do that and make it work. You're not going to do it and make it work. You do it in the Spirit. Yes. And the Spirit Amen. does the work yes. that Jesus Christ came to do because it's the same Spirit, yes. not a lookalike. He's not a twin. It's the same Spirit yes. that's inside you and I. Yes. So you and I could be brothers with Jesus Christ. We become spiritually hooked to God now, which God is drawing every person on this earth to him and give him a chance. That's what the Bible says. A man can't even get saved until the Spirit draws him to us. And so God's moving in a, a way that people want to have the Spirit, but they hate to give up what they got. Well, they have to start giving it up sometime because it gets closer and closer to old age and... Uh, how many knows anybody that's past two years, 200 years old yet? <laughs> you know, because we are going to be shut down sometime if this world is long, live long enough in this world. But God is moving because he wants you to understand you're dying out every day. Yeah. Yeah. Every day you become a new character. Yeah. Every day you don't still have the same hang-ups. If you do, you're not closing many doors. You're leaving them open just in case. If you have the just-in-case spirit, it can be healed right now. Amen. You can have a total miracle over that spirit. God is for us and not against us. Amen. God is the one that wrote this book. He inspired the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's why I watch out what people say when they go to correct the Bible, because the Holy Ghost inspired it, and the men tried to write it as they could. And so I would believe that you and I are reading this same book, and the spirit that it's talking about is the spirit of the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of God Almighty, which he, in the new covenant, put it inside of us after that we were saved. And so we are the power that's in us is what God has given us from heaven. So if we'd stop picking on what we know and start listening to God more, we'd have a happier life. We'd have, we'd have the uh, power that's inside of us to forgive people rather than hang on to, oh, somebody say, you shouldn't have said that. Well, I'm telling you, we need to let go of some things and shut some doors. On the devil's face, that carnal mind cannot take over in us anymore. We don't want to keep getting saved every day, but sometimes I guess people do. We don't want to take advantage of it. We should. We need to be close to God every time we, every time we can. We need to be happy. I'm going to say it again. We need to be happy. We need to be powerful. We need to be somebody that can and stop being a person that can't. 
we're going to be like God. We're going to be like Jesus Christ. We're going to walk this planet and be like Jesus Christ. Then we need to start it today. Come on. We need to get it going right today. Right, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All, all that I have to do, I never told them purposely that I'd, I'd hand him the mic today or anybody except for um, I was waiting for the what God wanted to do. And so what I want you to do is not go out there and pray for that, but I want you to let the Spirit of God move in you and call somebody out. Tell them to step, step out away from your seat and just say what was in your spirit. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Mark. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Just right now, Brother Mark, we're just we're just praying for you. I just I, I see an energy in you, an energy in you that that God can use. God needs men like you. God wants to use you. Just open your heart and receive what God has for you. And he has a lot for you. Don't let anyone tell you that he doesn't. God has a lot for you. So just open your heart up to receive all that God has because this, 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 this excitement that's built up within you, this energy that's built up within you, that's what God needs. That's what God wants. He needs good soldiers on the battlefield to go out, not to fight a physical fight, but to fight a spiritual fight, to be able to talk with people, to be able to tell them about uh, his son Jesus and all that Jesus has done. So you need to open up your heart and learn all you can. Learn all you can about God's word and share it with all your friends. There's a leadership quality just is it's just always been with you. People have kind of been just attracted to you when you talk. They just kind of listen to what you have to say. And that's what God wants. He needs men like you. So just open your heart to receive him, to receive his holy word so that you can go to work for him, not working for yourself, but working for God, working for God. When I say not working for yourself, I'm talking about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. And God, he will use you. You open your mouth, he will fill it with the words that need to come out. So just put your faith and trust in him. Glory, hallelujah. Amen, my brother. Amen, amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, it's, it's not really a game or puzzle show. God's really connecting real. right now. God is real. And what I want you to do is put your hands up and keep them up for just a little bit. Make uh, your arms a little bit tired, but it'll be worth it. Um, you can give them a break when you need to, but if you don't need to, we're getting ready to do something wild. All right. Right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just keep your hands up a little higher. Mm, praise God. Sister Rochelle, go pray for one of the ladies. Go to give them a word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> You are blessed, my daughter. Yes. You are blessed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Hallelujah. You are blessed. Don't think little of yourself. You are mine. You are a royal child. You are from the royals. Yes. You haven't seen anything yet. Hallelujah. Seek me as never before. Put me first, my daughter. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because the victory is already won. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Kathy, don't ever think little of yourself. Glory. Because we were all little. 
If we weren't little, we wouldn't have needed Jesus. Come on now. Amen. We've all fallen short. Come on. Amen. Think of yourself highly. You're a king's kid, hon. You're a king's kid. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is so real, so don't don't push it aside, but it's real. God's having a move right now, and what becomes of this move is whatever we believe in. But right now, Sister Escador, would you just go to somebody and give them a word? Hallelujah. Lord God, I pray with my sister, lift up every single person in her family, Lord God. I know that she has been praying for them a long time, and I see that every single one will come to the knowledge that you are Lord and King, Lord Jesus, and that she will see them come to you, give their lives to you, Lord Jesus, and call you their Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you got a word, why don't you go ahead and praise the Lord because the deacons of the church and the deacons, they're doing a great job right now. This is, this is a spiritual work that God intends to do to encourage one another, to bring healing to one another, to bring prosperity to one another, with the spiritual word of God turning the key so that it can work. Yes, yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on now. Woo. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to have, uh, if Pastor Linda will, give her the microphone and just go to somebody. That's my wife. And give them a word. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep on praising God. That was good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I know the Lord is good, and he's greatly to be praised. Amen. And he said, praise him in all things, because this is the will of God concerning you. Amen. And it's his will for us to prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. Yep. And I'm starting to see a lot of people falling by the way. He said, in the yes. last day, men's, men's hearts will fail them. Amen. And it, it, because of troubles and problems and woes, but we need to keep our eyes on God. Amen. Come on. Keep your eyes on him. Have faith and trust in him. When you really trust in him, you can rest in him. Amen. You believe in him. You rest in him. You know he Amen. is awesome, and he is omnipotent and all-powerful, all-knowing, and he's greater than any other source. Praise Amen. God. He is God Amen. Almighty, God Almighty, and greatly to be praised in all things. This is the Amen. Sabbath day, and he said, keep it holy unto him. He wants his people to be an example. We're an example yes. of God. Amen. We're supposed to be faithful as he's Amen. faithful unto us. Yes, We're Lord. supposed to be faithful unto uh, him. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. He wants uh, to use us. He said in this last day, he said, he's, do, he's doing a work, people, a yes. fast work, a fast work. Yes, Lord. Either you're going to get in it Jesus. or you're going to get out of it. He wants the people that will be obedient. He Amen. said obedience is better than sacrifice. People want to sacrifice things, but he said obedience is better than sacrifice. He was the Lamb of God. He was the supreme sacrifice. No one's going to pay that sacrifice. He's the only one that could, and he already did. He wants us to go forth in his name. Amen. He said, these things yes. you've seen me do, greater than these yes. shall you do Amen. in my name. And he said, go cast out devils. Bind Amen. up the brokenhearted. Go set them that are captives. Set them free. Yes. Set them free. Amen. Those that are sick, uh, uh, pray for them. And he yes. said, the prayer of the righteous shall save them, Lord. And, and lay hands on the sick, and they shall Amen. recover. Yes. 
He knew, he knew this virus was coming. He allowed Amen. the devil to put these plagues on because America has turned the, their, his back uh, from God. Yes. Amen. They are, they're not seeking God with their whole heart, mind, and soul. They're not living and loving and serving Amen. God. Yes, hallelujah, He wants Jesus. a people to give a 100% to hallelujah, him like he Jesus. gave to us. He gave us 100%. He said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that yes. he might destroy the works, works of Satan. Of the devil. And Amen. he's working through us to do that. Yes. That's why he wants us to go yes. and, and set uh, the captive free. He wants us Amen. to go heal the sick. He wants us to bind up the brokenhearted. Amen. He said, pure undefiled religion is go visit those widows and the, and the orphans and their affliction. Yes. We need to go out. We don't Amen. need to tell God to go and do it. He said, the things you've seen me do, you do, and greater than these Amen. shall you do in yes. my name. Amen. And we know the word. And you know what sin is? Disobedience. That's what Amen. sin is, disobedience. Yes. Amen. He wants you to be obedient, just like we want our children yes. or whoever is under us to be obedient. We don't Hallelujah, want them to question Jesus. us and be disobedient. Hot they don't have our favor Lord. when Jesus. they do. And Jesus, we don't have yes. God's favor, and America does not have God's favor in what they're doing. I'm telling you. Yes. He said, woe unto them that shed yes. innocent blood. There is nothing worse than killing babies. Amen. There is nothing worse than killing a baby. Amen. Oh, church, you don't hear me, but there is nothing, nothing worse, worse than killing Amen. a baby. Yes. And Amen. we need to open up our eyes. Amen. We need to open up our spiritual eyes. Amen. Not some old carnal thing yes. and being led by Jezebels. We're, this nation is being led by Jezebels. The witches are starting to rise up again. You, t yes. you hear about witches rising up again because yes. they'd rather seek uh, stuff like that than seek Almighty God. Amen. They're fooling in the wrong things, and God's judgment is what's on America. Amen. That's God's judgment. Yes. And let me tell you, it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. But God will always protect his people. Amen. God will always make a way for his people. He is the way, the truth, and the light. Amen. In him, we live, we breathe, and we have our being. Amen. In him. When he says it's over, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do. When he says it's over, it's going to be over. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. We need to rise up and proclaim the word of Amen. God. This is as such of a day like this. This is what we've been waiting for. This Amen. is what God's been preparing us for. Amen. He has been preparing us to go sit back and do nothing. He says, go forth. Amen. Go forth. He said, work while it's day because nighttime's going to come Amen. and no man shall work. Amen. Nobody's going to do it then. When he closes the door, it's over. It's over. Hallelujah. Oh, church, I, I, we need to raise up, and, and we do need to uh, begin to fast and pray. I know they can't see me, but they can hear me. <laughs> And that's what we need to hear. We need to hear what the Spirit of God says. Amen. Every day we should say, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God's saying. We're Amen. hearing everything, everything. Yes. And we're believing things. Amen. I don't want to hear anything but what the Spirit of God is saying. Because he said Amen. in the last day, many are going to be deceived. Many. Amen. There's going to be a great falling away. You're seeing it. Amen. Usually when trouble comes, people run to God. But you know what? They don't think they need God. They don't think they need a Savior. Right. They're Amen. deceived. Many are going to be deceived, even the very elect, if it were possible. Amen. We need, we need to come together. We need to pray like we have never prayed. Prayer is the, the, the key that unlocks the door. We need to start coming together. Amen. We, we sing about it, but we need to start doing it. We need to put God first Amen. in all things. First, not last, Amen. but first in all things. When you make a decision, Jesus, our Savior, he said, I don't Amen. do anything until I hear from my, my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. And that's what we should be doing, hearing from God in heaven. Yes. We shouldn't Amen. be leaning on our own. He said, don't lean on your own understanding, Amen. but in all your ways acknowledge me, and I shall direct thy path. Amen. He wants you to acknowledge him in all things. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Woo. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Richard, why don't you take your turn? All righty. Pray for somebody if you want. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. We just give you the glory, Hallelujah, honor, and praise, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. 
Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. Sister Sherry, I just feel like saying that God says it's coming. It's coming. I don't know Amen. what it is, but that's all God laid on my spirit. He said it's coming. Amen. 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 Just believe it and receive it. Remember what was yeah. said today. When any two or more agree on anything, yes. Amen. it's not a question. It's not a maybe. It's a certainty. Amen. It is coming, Amen. Sister Amen. Sherry. So just believe and receive it and thank God for it. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus, because he is moving on your Amen. behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. We give you the glory, honor, and praise, Lord Jesus, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing, Lord Jesus. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. You yes. are so precious, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. Ah, you are good, Lord Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. Well, I'm not preaching, but you think for God touches somebody, more people get excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all right. He, Come on now. Glory, he's hallelujah. Catching on there. Why don't everybody take a little time out and just praise the Lord right now? Um, with all that's within you, if that's all you have, then we need to get the microphones out there. With all that you have, praise Him. Yes, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. How many needed a miracle? All right. I'm going to just tell you that today, today, while well, Pastor Linda was preaching, some people are getting healed of different thoughts and things and fear. And then some uh, that were called out just received it right then. But there's a deeper healing that you need. You need it right now. And, and I'm talking to every one of us because the cleansing is inside us that needs to be done before the world can get cleared up because it starts in the church. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Starts in the church, then it hits the world. So what we need to do is let God put a stirring on the inside that you might stir. If you don't stir it up inside yourself, it's never going to work. It's going to turn into hard cement. And so... What we need to do is have a move of God inside each one of us individually and break that thing Come on. so that when we put our finger out and say, you uh, uh, COVID-19, we curse you in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? It has to fr uh, flee us. It has to flee the United States. We're doing a pretty big prayer. It needs to hit the world, that spirit, about cursing it and get it out of here. It was meant with a curse, and it's going out cursed by God Almighty. Hallelujah. All right. When, when you do this, what you do is just praise the Lord for three to four or five minutes and then start cursing that spirit. Curse it that the devil can't get back in your door. And somebody's already saying to um, out loud in the public and on TV, well, somebody said, could, could they have a <clears throat> this twice? And so they're giving them all kinds of reasons why it's possible. It's possible. Once it becomes possible inside of us, it took us over. So instead of that, we want God to cleanse it, cleanse the world. The world is a mess, but cleanse the world of that that was taking our lives or taking people's health. Um, how many understand what I mean right now? It is not, yeah, it's not just one person's job. One purple is not going to person get up and say, you know, I curse it in Jesus' name and walk away because it's not right. 
right now we're all in it together. And so what we need to do is keep praying, keep praying in a right way. The right way is when we pray, we believe, and we receive. If there's any doubt, you got to forget it, throw it out. But God is really asking for you and I to say it. He said, I know what your prayer is, but I'm not going to do it unless you pray it, unless you say it. And so we're not trying to be somebody who's a great person who just made it disappear. We're trying to do our, ment our uh, spiritual uh, move of God that's inside of us, put it with the rest of them that's out there praying. There's people praying that probably hadn't prayed in a long time, and there's some prayer warriors that are just not giving up. So right now, this will give them a surge, a power surge, and they'll just move across this land, and we'll know about it. <coughs> so everybody put your hands out. <coughs> If you don't want to put your hands out, then uh, then stand on top of a seat. No, just let's just keep it going. Let's just push it and let this spirit go. All right, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we know that you are able to clear this land, this whole world, Lord God, and we're giving it a little part of our urge, our power push, God, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. We curse it, we bind it, and we want it out of here. The symptoms and everything in Jesus' holy and mighty name. God has caused people to be out of work. It's caused people to be dying. Lord Jesus, Lord, families broken up, families crying. Lord, in Jesus' name, we break that thing in Jesus' name. No strongholds on this planet in Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Move out and come to the altar real quick. I just feel this here, and then we'll just end the service. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Move the dynamic mountain that is in front of you. Yeah. And there's probably a million other ones, but don't worry. When this one gets out of your way, you'll be able to move into further into the spiritual walk with Christ. But I want to do it with... Um, get all the hands uh, in the air because I'm tempted to say join hands, but I don't want to do it right now. I want to just go ahead and praise God and God will just do it, all right? All right. I'm going to have you pray, and then you can tell them about tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So right now, as we have our hands raised in the air and our heads bowed, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message that was brought forth this morning. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for bringing us all together this morning. We thank you, dear Lord, that you have opened up our hearts and our minds to receive your holy word this morning, dear Lord. And right now, dear Heavenly Father, right now, dear Lord, we're just asking you to let us take this heavenly word and run with it, dear Lord. Run with it throughout the world, dear Heavenly Father, so that we may share it with everyone we come into contact with, dear Lord. So right now, dear Heavenly Father, as we leave this holy house of yours, dear Heavenly Father, let us just retain everything we've heard here today in our hearts, dear Lord, so that we may share with everyone. Let us always uplift the name of Jesus wherever we go, wherever we are, dear Heavenly Father, so that all may know that Jesus is the reason for this season, dear Heavenly Father. We will keep Christ in Christmas, dear Heavenly Father. So right now, dear Lord, with our hands raised, dear Heavenly Father, we just praise you. We praise you, dear Heavenly Father, right now. And we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. In Christ Jesus' name, let us all sing amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Glory, hallelujah. I uh, just want to say that we thank God for workers that come to the church and get things accomplished. And Richard and his father, uh, which is Brother Brian, 
they came in and they made sure this new stuff that we got, the microphones and the system and all the stuff, they stayed here. They, and we even got a real lit shine like as if we're on TV. <laughs> but we thank God for... <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, <laughs> anyways, we thank God for people who put their labor in free to the church and bring the, this stuff here. And Hold on. I'm sorry, but I got a word for you, Linda, and I have to give it. Okay. You know, he's, the Lord's showing me, he says, as a time like this, as in this day, he wants to use you at work. He said, don't run or grow weary, but come forth, come forth in the name of the Lord and take, hey, take dominion over what's going on. Yeah. Ooh, and I agree with you. Yes. I agree with yes. you. But the Lord just kept saying that in my heart. Yes. Don't yes. run from it, but take dominion over it in the name of Jesus. I agree yes. with you. We stand with you. Yes. We agree yes. with you in yes. Jesus yes. name for yes. victory, for yes. victory as a day like this, Lord Jesus. Let her come forth and shine for the glory of God in Jesus yes. holy name. And Lord, I plead the blood over her mind, body and soul. Yes. I plead the blood of Jesus. Yes. And I thank you, Lord, because you're yes. God keeping yes. power in Jesus yes. holy name. Yes. In Jesus holy name. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Glory be to God. Glory be to thank God. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Amen. Amen. We thank everyone for coming this morning, and we expect you to come back this evening at 630 for your double portion. Amen. Amen. May God bless your comings and goings. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to our stream. However, this brings a conclusion to our service. We would like to invite everyone to help us out by making any donations as you please, as they do help us to continue our ministry. If you would like to send a gift online, donations can be made using the donate button at our website, faithtemplebg.org, or if you would prefer to send something in the mail, all checks or money orders can be written to Faith Temple and can be mailed to the address 175 State Street in Bowling Green, Ohio, zip code 43402. We really do appreciate any and all gifts sent in. We thank you for tuning in to our stream, and we hope to catch you on the next one. We love you, and God bless.